The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. Funding for Prairie Sportsman is provided by... The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, an ideal Minnesota resort, luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Indoor Water Park, and more. Whatever the season or the reason, it's just more fun at the Arrowwood Resort. Strike Master, building quality fishing equipment for over 60 years. Visit StrikeMaster.com to learn more. Funding is also provided by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the outdoor enthusiasts who are members of this station. Ah, dreaming about fishing. Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Prairie Sportsman. We're glad to have you along this week, and we hope you like the show. Let's take a quick look at what we have lined up for you this week. The National Guard pheasant hunt starts with a bang this time, and you'll love the action and the beauty of our winter landscape. Come with me over here. Chef Kurt is in action too, and has whipped up a unique pheasant recipe for you to learn about and enjoy. Stay tuned. Prairie Sportsman is coming up next. Each year, the Minnesota National Guard holds its annual pheasant hunt. Thanks to a number of landowners who allow them to hunt, our boys enjoy the freedom of the outdoors and the camaraderie of their fellow veterans. Pheasant hunting in the snow is a fast tempo sport. Kind of a run and gun affair, but we can't forget the snow. It makes this sport unique. End of season hunts can be the best of hunts. You just have to be prepared. Being prepared is what the National Guard is all about. Imagine some of these bush bunnies over in the hard. heat of Iraq and you can see what I mean. I caught him. Mushing through snow that's over a foot high overall and several feet high in places is a challenge for man and dog. Rooster! But the rewards are great. Rooster! Big long tail roosters in prime condition and in peak operating form. The big red birds are everywhere when the cover is thick. It's winter, you know, and these birds winter in trees. When the cattail sloughs are full of snow, the birds head for the willows and farm groves to survive. After seeing them erupt in big numbers, a pattern has developed. March through the snow to drive the heavy cover to a waiting line of posters. That's the choice spot. To be in a line of posters offers the best chance for a shot. Daddy. 
the spooky birds leave cover when they hear the drivers coming. And with luck, they'll fly past the posters. If you're like me, you love the hunting dog. He's your buddy at home, but out here he's your partner and your pal. He'll give you his all, and he's with you all the way. Even in the snow. Yes, he'll have to work extra hard to get around in the snow, but he'll do it for you. And besides, he loves this just like you do. It's a rare bird that gets through this line of sportsmen. They get most of them. Pound that brush, Chris. You got him. Loving it, Mark. Loving it. Poor pup. That snow is deep. The boys gather when everyone's out of cover. Yeah, when I saw out of the grove, I thought I was going to land in the back of your, someone's truck. So far, so good. Come on, I had to yell at Tim, look out! <laughs> it means a lot when you can spend some time with them. The dogs are still full of vinegar. She lives with me up at Ripley. Good oh, girl, you did good. Huh, Brad, they had somebody else's bird. You guys stop it now. Hey, I know where this is going. How many is it? That's five? You missed a few days already. Time to saddle up for more. Mush through the deep snow and make for the heavy cover. This could be good. Take a stand and let the old 870 do its job. A hush falls over the field as the drive is completed. Wasn't that a surprise? Wouldn't you think there'd be at least a hen in all that grass? Jim Vanderweist has a plan. The boys assemble by the pickups and then quickly disperse. Before long, a short drive has paid off. Birds are flying and the posters are gunning. Those willows are the key. Willows are thick cover. Birds typically hold tight in this thick brush. Creep along and let your dog work around. He'll put up a rooster, and even if you don't get a shot, the posters will. Keep working, and you'll eventually kick one up. Young Brennan Longnecker has downed a rooster and needs the help of the dogs to retrieve his pheasant. Straight up for me, about 50 yards. 
The boys will help Brennan out if they can. If they can get there. Big Dan Persicky is here now, and between him and Chris Eisenminger, things will get done. I missed three roosters. Period. Hey, so we got one bird down. Prairie sportsman fans will remember when these two boys had a last goose hunt with us before deploying to Iraq. A frozen spaniel is a classic sight on this snowy hunt. Hey, look. Danny and his dog have made Brennan's day. Look at the sharpshooter. Yeah. Is there a bird? Yeah, but it's a sharpshooter. He dropped right away. His rooster is in hand. Danny explains how he and the dog got it. He was burrowed in. Come on, guys. Good girl. She's a good girl. How can you see a coyote flush in front of you and not be glad you're off the living room couch and out in the oh-so-fresh winter air? How can you stand in the snow and touch off a shot at a fleeing rooster and not be glad to be there? As the day goes on, the miles grow longer, and it takes some grit to keep going. Two roosters have come down and landed on the inside of the trees right to your right, and he never come up again. What'd you say, Jim? Two roosters landed right behind these tall trees, and neither one of them sailed all the way out. Jim and Danny meet up and trudge off to a meeting place where more strategy is planned. I don't care which way you guys want to do it. Tell me and we'll go. There's a piece of cover up ahead to drive. I'm going short. The snow's deep here and the going is tough, real tough. Keep going and press on. The fun is about to start. Keep marching, the cover is just ahead, and it looks like it could be good. Slog on through the snow, and we'll be into that grove. This is it. The birds are thick in here. The boys can see them running and flying. Mop up a few stray down birds and gather at the road. Hey, another one you guys? Yeah, and there's another one out there. Uh, Brennan has stories to tell. He's been doing some good shooting again. <laughs> yeah, I'm shaking trying to reload. And...
shaking because the poor birds don't know, so I just <laughs> land. Yeah. A line of deer break cover. Then Chris gets advice from the landowner that has kindly allowed the guard boys to hunt his land. Good looking cover it is, a mixture of tall grass and trees. It'll be holding some birds for sure. Rick Longnecker takes his pheasant hunting seriously. He even crouches when he's posting to show less to an approaching bird. It's been a long, hard hunt, but you can tell by the little dog's tail that there's plenty of energy left for those pheasants. That deer is in a big hurry. Deep snow is no joke to these men and dogs. They have had the course. But it's all worth it when you can struggle out of cover and prepare to celebrate a rough and successful hunt. Now it's the ceremonial ending to the annual National Guard Festival. Every sportsman loves the challenge and adventure of the outdoors, but not everyone can prepare a wild game like Chef Kurt Anderson. Chef Kurt is back again this week with another unique recipe for us to try. Let's take a look at what Chef Kurt has for us this time. Hey, Prairie Sportsman, tonight... Pheasant soup, gratiné style. Come with me over here. This pot here, I've been trying to cook that pheasant. You know how that goes. And I've been pulling out those pieces. So we're going to bring that over here a second. I want to show you what I'm up to. I've got the carcass that I've kind of been running my fingers through. There's a lot of nooks and crannies in this guy, you know. And you can pull out a lot of meat. But I want to be careful for the bones and the gristle. That's kind of the... That's the catch-22 always, isn't it? So we're going to grab as much as we all and I, Don't be scared to squeeze a little bit. And then at the same time, you're watching for any BBs or ammunition. <laughs> we'll try to avoid that. Any kind of skin material. That we'll probably do without. Anything that would like not be fun to chew or that your kids are going to spit out and go, Ooh, Dad, that no good. Okay, just like that. I kind of, a lot of times I'll use a larger pot like this, uh, partially for two reasons, because I use it as basically my garbage catch as well. See, so that all works. Now, so we're going to pile that in here. Now as we're doing this, I want to start cooking something else. Um, the soup I'm making, guy I share some church time with, John, he loves pheasant soup. I made some pheasant soup that this man's going to flip over. Now in this bowl, all I've uh, done, you know those bags of uh, beans, multi, multi beans that you can get. I poached off about a third of a bag or roughly what you could hold in your hand of these beans. Okay, I've added a little more vegetable to this. My goal here is to create a very nice robust stock. I'm going to turn that heat up so this starts to simmer pretty hard. Okay, now if you take a shot at this bowl, I want to give you an idea. When, when, we're, making, when we're making a soup that's going to have a broth, to help avoid the problem of having soup that has either too much broth and not enough inside of it, or too much, uh, too much stuff and no broth, which happens, 
just remember the ingredients you're adding as far as whether or not they'll suck up some of the juice. For example, noodles. If noodles or rice was going in this, you know how they can absorb. So that's a material where it, you need to eat it relatively fast or it's going to lose a lot of its sauce and flavor. So here, as you see me push the spoon around, you're going to get an idea of just, just how uh, much space there is between all of that material and uh, that I can pretty much spoon up at any time and I've got material and broth there. That's what we're looking for. Uh, on most soups, especially if you're entertaining, you might want to be the one that dishes them up because some people are soup pigs and they take all the good stuff out of there and they leave all the yuckier stuff left for you. So we're going to chop up the meat that's going to add to this. Now I told you we were going to make a gratiné. And what that involves is we're going to take the two bowls that are in front of us. We're going to put the soup in there and we're going to cut a special crouton to put on top. And then we're going to add some pizza cheese to that. Okay? Uh, that could be a mix of provolone and mozzarella. We're just going to put a little cheese on there and brown it in the oven. At, uh, I got the oven set over 420 degrees now, 425. And that's going to do us that trick. So we're kind of measuring. You see I started to make the cut. I wanted to make sure I would fit in that bowl. So I've grabbed a slice of stale bread that we got because you're using it for a crouton. And that'll work out just perfect. I'm going to remove the crust. Kids won't like that. Neither will mama. So we're going to cut that away. We square that off just like so. Now those are going to be ready for us as we get to that point. Now, with that having been said, I'm going to take just a little bit of margarine. This is going to help me brown right at the end. And it's going to give it a better body between the soup and the bread itself. The bread's going to act like a crouton. Now, using the stale bread helps a lot because it won't absorb as much soup the minute I put it on. So let's add two more things to our soup. You're going to see a little bit of brandy. And we're going to see a little bit of mustard. Now this is just basic yellow table mustard, but you're going to find a lot of times these wild game broth soups, if you got a little country Dijon or some type of mustard added to that, it's going to really bring out some of that flavor. Okay, now we're not going to add a lot, just picture a little bit going in there. We'll set that off to the side. The brandy on the other hand does a totally different aspect. This will uh, actually give you initially kind of a twinge so we're going to add just enough to go over the top you know it's more for show than anything else you could use a higher proof alcohol and light this on fire uh, if you feel feel so inclined so we're going to let this uh, we're going to give this a taste is what we should do that's the next step so now, if it doesn't taste quite right or rich enough, we're going to have to add a little more base to help it out. Nope, we're going to leave it alone just there. It's got plenty of base. It's got plenty of broth to it. When you, when you, when you swallow it, when you, when you pass it back, that material is uh, it's, it's lightening up the uh, taste buds quite well. So, here we go. I want to try to spread this out evenly, make sure there's meat for everybody. Look at there. Now I'm using these little bean pots we had. They make uh, for a darn nice soup cup. So you're going to enjoy this if you try that at home. And then at the same point, this is a little bit handier. I could brown it with a torch, but I think I'm going to find this to work a little bit better. So with that on, we move up here. Now it goes on the crouton. Okay? Each one. And then a little dose of that cheese, right? Bam, right on top there. Now, I just want to melt this. I want this to be an ooey bit of goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. See? That's what we're after. Now, you're going to give this about five minutes in your oven, 425 degrees, smoking hot. We're going to melt that cheese a bit, get it golden, we'll be right back to pull it out. All right, here we go. The 
This is the defining moment. Ooh, there we are. So, here's what I want to point out. Our pots of soup, nice and bubbly. We must be careful. This is all hot, hot, hot. There we are. Pass it on to a bigger plate. Now the other thing is make sure your crocs are oven proof. So you'll want to watch for that. Now, a little shot of parsley. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Please come out. <laughs> uh oh, technical difficulties. Can you believe that? <laughs> Heck with him. Tried and true. We're never, we're never out of luck here. Here we go. We're just going to kick it up a little bit here so it looks a little nicer. Bam! Now, you're ready to eat. Take a look at this, Tim. Look at that. Ooh, ooey gooey goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a try. I'm going to eat that bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that just about does it for us this week. We appreciate having you along with us, and we invite you to come along next time for another outdoor adventure with Prairie Sportsman. Prairie Sportsman is available online with more photos, video, and additional information. Follow the adventures and updates on Facebook and connect with more outdoor friends and enthusiasts. Funding for Prairie Sportsman is provided by... The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, an ideal Minnesota resort, luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Indoor Water Park, and more. Whatever the season or the reason, it's just more fun at the Arrowwood Resort. Strike Master, building quality fishing equipment for over 60 years. Visit StrikeMaster.com to learn more. Funding is also provided by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the outdoor enthusiasts who are members of this station.